How's it going YouTube? Right, about nine, ten months ago or so, I did a video on a super little interesting bit of kit. Uh, it was this one here. This was like a little display thing that sits on the car dashboard. And then on the outside of the car, it's got like an infrared thermal camera that sits in the grill. And what this did was give you like a thermal infrared night vision sort of thing for the car, which could differentiate uh, between people and cars and things like that. Uh, so it could actually pre-warn you of things that you wouldn't necessarily normally see yourself when you're driving down the road. Sometimes if it's dark and you've got pedestrians walking out in the street in front of you, you won't necessarily see them. Fast forward nine ten months to where we are now and I've got another one to look at uh, this one is the Insight Drive by Robofinity uh, and as we can see it's a lot more modern looking and it should fit in a lot better on the aesthetics of the car and uh, that's what I'm hoping anyway this at the minute is a pre-production model that we're going to have a look at it's due to be released anytime actually during this month October it's a crowdfunded project. Um, I'll put links down below to where you can check this out for yourself. Uh, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna have a look at this. I'm super interested to try it out on a vehicle. What I will do is I'll temporarily fit it uh, to the Hyundai Tucson uh, so we can drive around and have a look and see how it works. Uh, but I want to save actually fitting it permanently uh, to the new camper build, uh, the Boxer. Uh, the reason I'm not doing that right now is because there's other stuff I want to fit as well to that. I need to fit like a, a bit of a bull bar and all that sort of stuff on the front. Uh, so what I'll do is I will fit that as I fit other stuff to it. So just for the purpose of this video, I want to temporarily fit this uh, to the Hyundai so we can try it out. I'm really super interested in how it's going to work and how it's going to look. Uh, looking at this look, this one is a lot more aesthetic. So I think the first thing we need to do is let's get down on the bench. Uh, let's get this unboxed. Like I said, this is a pre-production one, so I don't know whether the actual production ones are going to be exactly like this and everything that's in it is going to be exactly the same. Uh, but we'll have a look anyway, see if we can figure it out. And I know also there's an app that you can download for your phone. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually released yet. We'll have a look, see if we can find it, but it's gonna be for Android and I iPhone eventually. Uh, and what you can do is there's lots of little things you can do, including um, over the air updates and things like that for this system, because it is a bit of a dash cam as well. Uh, but obviously having the thermal night vision, this makes this dash cam a little bit different. Uh, so let's get it on the bench, let's unbox it, let's see what it looks like and see what you get in the box, see if we can figure out how to fit it and let's take it out to the car, fit it and take it for a drive and have a look through, see how it works and we'll go out in the dark and things like that and just see what it's like and we'll see how good the AI is for picking up people and things like that at the side of the road. Uh, like I said, this is a pre-production model. It may or may not look exactly the same as this when it's shipped, I'm not sure. But this is the Robofinity Insight Drive, an AI-powered thermal imaging dash cam. And according to this, it's a five-minute self-installation, so we'll check that out. Uh, so let's take this off and let's open it up and see what you get in the box. Right, so opening it up, uh, we seem to have got a little top bit here that's got some stuff in and a bottom bit down there. So let's just split this out. Uh, we'll put this to one side for a second. Uh, let's get everything out of this top bit, shall we, and see what's in there. Uh, we seem to have an IR camera there. This looks like the actual display itself. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, and in this bit down here, uh, we seem to have got the brains of the thing. So let's put this to one side. Uh, right, so in the top bit, we've got an IR camera, uh, the display there, which obviously looks a lot more modern than the other one, uh, and the computer for it. Right, so if I pull everything out this bottom bit one at a time, let's have a look and see what we get in there. Right, the first thing I've pulled out um, is this funky looking thing here. Uh, this looks like a little uh, double-sided sticky pad. And this bit, I think, is a magnet, uh, because what it's for is for this screen here. So this is how we mount it to the dashboard. And it also means that this screen is removable for security purposes if we want to take it out of the vehicle. Uh, next thing in the box uh, is this little cover thing here. I'm assuming this is to protect the camera. Uh, that'll protect the camera uh, depending on where we want to fit it. Uh, we've got a few more cables, uh, obviously a 12 volt power supply. Uh, we've got another little cable there which is to go in between uh, the screen and this box. And uh, we've got another little box here, uh, which 
Let's have a look inside and see what we get in it. Little bag of tools there to fit everything. Uh, some little pads and straps so we can stick down and strap up the cables. 32 gigabyte SD card. I'm assuming there's a slot for that in here. Uh, no, it's in the top of the screen right there. Uh, the reason I'm guessing all this is because in the box uh, there's no instructions. So I'm hoping that there's a, a set of instructions that come in the ones that are sent out ev to everybody for the retail ones. And in here we've got some little brackets for something. We'll figure out what they're for later as well. Uh, we've also got like a long pokey thing. I am assuming uh, this is for feeding cables through things if that's what we want to do because this is like a cable fish where you can push it through uh, and then hook that to grab the cable. Uh, that's what it looks like to me so I will assume that's what it's for. Uh, and that is everything that we get in the box. Right, so back to the three main components, uh, the screen, uh, the little computer for it, and the IR camera. Uh, the screen itself is a 1650 by 720 uh, IPS display, so that should be really good quality uh, that we can obviously see from any angle due to it being the IPS. And like I said at the top, we've got the micro SD slot there, and this looks like a little power button as well. The camera itself is an IP67 waterproof camera. Uh, obviously, this has to sit outside of the vehicle. This can't be inside uh, because IR cameras are measuring the temperature of the surface of what it's seeing. So if this was looking through a window, this would tell you the temperature of the window and not everything else. Uh, so this needs a clear view of outside. And the main reason for using the IR is so we've got penetration, so we can see through darkness, bad weather and things like that uh, to help us see things that your naked eye can't see. So this is why we're using this camera. This is quite interesting stuff, so we'll see it once it's running. Uh, the brains of the outfit is run by AI Collision Warning, so that'll differentiate between the background and things that are hazards like people, animals, vehicles and things like that. Um, it's got a 200 meter detection range for the AI, so anything within 200 meters it will be able to tell us what it is and pre-warn us of it. And it's got a 0.1 second reaction time for that warning. Uh, this screen, by the way, is a 6.25 inch uh, screen, so as you can see it is pretty decent sized. Uh, it's a little bit larger than the iPhone 16. Right, so I think before we take it out to the vehicle, uh, let me just plug it all in here, ready, see if we can get it powered up, and just make sure it's all working. And what I'll do is I've got this little power bank and this little 12 volt socket here, uh, so we can get some power to it and get it working. Right, so five minute insulation it says. Uh, just to plug it in, let's have a look. We've got the power there, I'll plug that into this in a minute. Uh, so on the main computer, uh, we've got this loom here. Uh, we plug that loom into the computer. On the end of this loom, uh, we've got two plugs. A little four pin one that plugs in together. I'm assuming that's the power. Uh, and the one with more pins, uh, that one goes into this monitor there. So if we plug that one into the monitor, and then that leaves one more, uh, which is like this little, little USB-C connection there. Uh, which is for the camera itself. So if I undo this so we can move the camera out of the way. So I'll plug that in there like that. Right, so the last thing to do is let's plug some power on it. So here's the first startup screen now. Uh, first job we've got to do, it seems it's a touch screen. Uh, we've got to format the card. So if I click format, uh, that's formatted the card now. And as we can see there, we've got a little red dot uh, because it's automatically started recording. Uh, if I pick this camera up, uh, and pointed it, you can see it pointed at me, it's, all, it's automatically picked me up as, oh my god, I'm too close, I need to do something. Um, but as you can see there, the camera's now working. Uh, it's confusing it slightly because obviously we're in the house. Uh, so I think what we need to do now is take this out to the vehicle. Uh, let's get it fitted to the vehicle uh, and let's see what it's like in a real life application. Uh, and obviously it's recording all the time now. Uh, you can go to playback there. Uh, it says, please re stop recording. So if we press the record to stop recording, uh, we'll go into the playback. Uh, there's our first video file. Uh, so it is like a dash cam uh, that's recording all of the time. Uh, there you can see the recording uh, from when I was moving it around. Uh, you can lock these recordings and everything else just the same as a normal dash cam. Uh, so this is really good. 
found out what that other little bag of brackets and things are. It's for this camera cable here. Uh, this fits on there. Uh, and then it's got some little thumb screws and things like that that fasten it all together. Uh, so when you plug it into here, you see those two holes there, uh, that should plug in and then screw it all up. Uh, I'll show you in a second when I've built it. I don't know why you have to build this bit yourself, uh, but that's how it is. So when it's built, I'll show you in a second. Uh, there you are, that's all built up. So that plugs in there and then you can screw these little bits into the back of there so the camera's not falling out. Uh, right, what I've done is I've fitted it in the Volkswagen Transporter just for now, uh, just so we can try it for this. Reason is, is because it's got a nice little flat bit here uh, to lean it on, rather than fitting it properly anywhere. Uh, so there's the screen just leant up against the side. Um, I've plugged that into the power down there and literally just going out to the camera, I've got the wire going out there, out of the door and I've fitted it just down there on the bonnet. Let's have a look. If we have a look on the outside, this is actually how they're designed to be fitted. Um, it's fitted behind there and it's got the little, um, they're not like Allen keys, it's like security bits underneath. So if you open this up, you can tighten it up uh, and it clamps onto the back of this uh, and it's a nice soft plastic, so it doesn't actually damage anything. Uh, and then what I've done is I've just ran this all the way around and then into the door there just for now. Uh, fitting it permanently, what I'd probably do is fit it down here somewhere in the grill. Uh, this is the camera for the other system uh, that we looked at earlier. That's just fitted into the grill. Uh, I'd probably do something similar with that to do it permanently. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to fit it onto this van uh, later on once we've got the nudge bar and everything else on it uh, because the system looks quite posh and it looked nice in there. So I think what we'll do now is I've got a little camera uh, on my cap there uh, so what we'll do is we'll go for a drive and we'll see what I can see see how it works uh, see the warnings it's giving us as it's recording the screen I can overlay the screen and things like that so we can have a look and see what it's like uh, and then later on once when it's dark uh, we'll go out again and we'll do the same thing so I'll just talk over the overlay of this video uh, so let's see what it's like when it's in action Right, so the first thing I did was I took it out for a drive during the daytime just to show you the normal capabilities under normal conditions. It was, it was like early evening and you can see it picking up the people on the left and the right as we drive past them. Now the cars start off green as they're further away and as they get within like what they call like a danger zone, uh, they, it changes like a red colour. But it seemed to be picking out the people quite nicely and identifying them quite well as we was driving past them especially as we go around this corner you can see in the distance they're probably a bit out of my view but the cameras pick them up straight away there's three or four people on the left as we're going around this bend and halfway around this bend there's some more that the camera picked up straight away the background is black and white so what it does is it highlights people and the points of interest as a color so you can pick them out straight away and make them a bit easier for the eye it does get a little bit confusing when we go into a heavy built up area like this train station. You can see the cars on the right and the people on the left. Um, it does get a little bit overwhelming. At one point it started raining and it kind of lost the van from reflections. It's got a rain mode on it which you can turn on, uh, which I did and you can see after I switched it on the van kind of came back into view again and it picked it back up straight away. Which is something the other system was missing. So a bit later on we decided to go out in the dark. Uh, this is parked in Morrison's car park and as you can see the view that my eyes can see is really quite limited due to the reflections of the rain and the darkness uh, but the camera is picking up the people walking around really well. And the same down the busy streets, uh, people kind of blend into the background a little bit and when it gets dark and as you can see uh, by this clip and the next few clips that it, it really picks them out well which is really what you want. And this camera comes into its own as soon as the roads get a little bit quieter uh, because it's darker you can't really see and it really pinpoints the people out in the distance. 
This next section shows the night vision capabilities of it, uh, where it can really pick out the details of the road so you can see where you're going in difficult to see conditions, and obviously picking out people as well along the way. Right, I've just had a message from Robofinity and I've just been given a pre-release of the app for Android. It's, it's only for Android at the minute, so I've downloaded it. Let's have a look at it and see what it does. Right, so I've got the system turned on. It's literally looking at the back of the other car at the minute. Uh, it is my Android phone. This is a Google Pixel. Uh, I've downloaded the app there, as you can see, Insight Drive. Uh, so if we start that up, let's see what it does. Uh, please connect your phone to the Wi-Fi AI box. Right, as you can see, we're now connected. On the back of this box, it's got a little sticker and that's the name of the Wi-Fi network that you'll find. And as you can see now, we're getting a live view uh, on the phone of what it's showing there. Uh, also on the phone, uh, what we've got is we've got the settings, which we can go into the settings and change some settings. Uh, we've got the AI detection switch. We can actually turn off the AI if that's what we want to do. Uh, collision warning distance setting. Uh, we can increase or decrease the warning system uh, for the cars and the pedestrians, which is also quite good. Uh, unit distance, we've got meters. We can change that to feet. Uh, general, uh, this is just language settings. And then in help, uh, we've got a few little documents, a version info, uh, and this will give us the software version of what we're on now. Right, so that's the application. Um, as I said, this is a, a pre-release version of the application uh, because the a final version when it comes out it will have their options as well uh, to update the system i've had a look through these menus and i can't find anything in this version uh, so you will be able to update the firmware through this application over the phone right so that was a look at the inside drive and i think the weather as well was perfect for it as well because we had a bit of rain it was dark and it was kind of good conditions and there were some times as we saw where the camera saw the people uh, quite a bit before I actually saw them myself so it worked out quite well with the with the weather and things like that. Uh, obviously this is not a review because this is like a pre-production model that I've been sent and it'd probably be a bit unfair to review it. Uh, once we've got the app and you've got over the air downloads and things like that to update the firmware uh, then it can only get better can't it? Uh, when you first turned it on, it's a little bit overexcitable with its beeping and warning, uh, but it seems to settle down after a, after a few seconds of driving. It's like it's learning over time and it doesn't seem to warn you about every little thing later on. It's just the beginning when it first turns on. Uh, these systems overall I do find uh, quite a good little safety feature to have in your vehicle, especially when you're on less busy kind of roads. When you're in towns, everything's flashing up, like cars here, cars there, people here, people there, and it's a bit overwhelming, so it's more of, I suppose, a dash cam in those situations. Uh, but as soon as the road starts quietening down and there's not a lot of movement on the road or not a lot of action around, then it does really well pinpoint people out in the distance and things like that, especially in the conditions like we had with the rain and the darkness. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put some links down below where you can check this out for yourself and see what you think. As it stands as I make this video, it's like a pre-order. I think it's a, a £1 or a $1 uh, pre-order on it now so you can reserve your system. Uh, but I do believe it is due to come out this month in October. Uh, so check it out yourself down below in the links. Uh, comment below, I do like to read your comments. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you want to see some more kind of random things because we obviously we do things like this. Uh, we're doing the camper conversion and e-bikes, car stereos, tech, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon thing so it tells you when I upload a video. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.